What up, YouTube? Me again. As you can see the video. What does it mean to quench the Holy Spirit? What it means to quench the Holy Spirit? You know, if you put wood on an altar, on a burning altar, the fire stays lit. Because it's not consumed from lack of stuff to burn. So, when, you, when we receive the Holy Spirit, if we don't do godly things, um, pray, praise, worship, bringing people to uh, souls to Christ, going to church, if we lack godly things, godly things is like wood. So we're actually keeping the fire of the Holy Spirit, the presence within you, lit by doing these godly things. Without doing the godly things, the fire of the Holy Spirit dims down more and more and more. And then eventually it goes out completely to where you don't even feel it anymore within you. When I first received the Holy Spirit, I was able to feel it completely in me. Like the presence. It was a presence in me. Like a, I felt I wasn't the only one inside me. Like there was another soul in me like another spirit other than my own so um the bible actually says do not quench or grieve the holy spirit i've quenched it i've grieved it before um sorry just yawned so i've quenched and grieved it many many times but God already knew that we would do this. He already know, knew that I would do that before eternity, before even creating me. He can see the future. He can see what we do in the future. He can see the future, the past. He can see eternity in the past, eternity in the future, and the present of every single person's future, every single person who's ever lived's future. And his own future eternity in the past. How can God look at eternity in the past, eternity in the future, everybody's futures, that every single person in the world, which is like, what, like estimated like 9 billion people, all at the same time, remembering every detail from every, like, 9 billion people's, um, lives like completely perfectly we can't comprehend that that's how go and god is even infinitely more powerful than that that right there is just we can't we can't even imagine like sorry fly like we can't even come close to comprehending his power i mean his power is infinite so, a lot of people actually think that there's gods and not one god because look at the world and everybody, it's, the world is so huge, not, how can just one god create all of this? Well, he's infinitely powerful, so, there's that. Um, that's why a lot of people actually don't think that he exists because they don't believe in a being that has that much power that's infinite. Well, guess what, atheists? You're wrong. God exists, and he is infinitely powerful. Why is that, I mean, why is that so hard to believe, right? I mean, people want to believe what they see. A lot of people actually have the attitude and the uh, the way of thinking, saying, if I, if I can't see it, then I can't believe it's real. They only believe what they see. Well, the Bible says those who believe without seeing are the ones who are blessed. Am I wrong? Right. For they have seen him. Or they have believed in his name without even seeing him. I believed in the redemptive work of Christ and got saved. September 6, 2014. Obviously, when I was taking a crap while doing that, Jesus wasn't standing right there in front of me while I was doing that. While I said the prayer, the sinner's prayer, and received salvation. He wasn't there. He's everywhere at the same time. Yeah, but I mean, you know... I mean, maybe he was in the bathroom when I was taking a crap. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just weird mentioning it like that. I mean, but, 
you know what I'm saying. But um, but I was I believed without seeing. So I received salvation. Blessed those are who believe without even seeing me. Um, so quenching the Holy Spirit is from not doing doing ungodly things um, to keep it lit. And I did that from getting drunk, overdosing on medication for recreational use. Um, self-harming when I was depressed back then. Um, a lot of stuff, actually. Thank God I'll show you. Yes, I mean, it's truthful. This is a truthful channel, so I will show you guys my self-harm scars. I'm not proud of them, but... So, I mean, don't judge, you know, but... Whatever. Well, there's that, but, um, doing a lot of stuff that's ungodly, like living in sin willfully and habitual sin, the Bible states, I gave a clear proof video that you can't lose salvation, that we can't walk away from salvation by backsliding too far. We can't forfeit. A lot of times, a lot of people actually say that you can forfeit your salvation, just throw it away. How can you throw away a gift that you've already received? You can, The only way to forfeit it is to never receive it. The only way to throw it away is to never receive it. So here's the thing. If you could throw away salvation or forfeit it, or which is also considered losing it, which is completely contrary to the Bibles, um, to the Bible states then that would mean right there that Jesus would have lost his life. He got saved, or uh, we get saved through his redemptive work. And then um, he died on the cross, then rose again. Then if we lose our salvation, we're once again unsaved. So that means... That would mean only mean that Jesus died on the cross, rose again into eternal life, we get saved, and then rise to eternal life. Then he would have had to re-die on the cross and then come back to life again. So in other words, if we could lose salvation, we could just we could get it back by believing re re believing in him. Um and his redemptive work on the cross on the cross. You know, if that were possible, everybody would be having to get saved over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. A lot of people actually think that they have to go to the, the church every Sunday to get resaved because they think that they lost the salvation by quenching the Holy Spirit. Yes, it really does make you feel like you're unsaved. Like, I've gone years and years and years, like, spiritual suffering since, like, 2014, uh, feeling unsaved. Believing that I'm unsaved. Well, Satan obviously does that. Um, and without the presence of the Spirit, you feel like you don't even have salvation through him. So, that's what quenching the Spirit means. If you receive the Holy Spirit, don't do what I did. I've learned, come to learn that there's other Christians out there like me who's done this. And it's just bad. I mean, you feel spiritually lost. You feel spiritually distant from God. Um, even though he's like right next to you, you feel like you're a billion miles away from him. You feel like your prayers aren't being answered. You feel like he can't even hear your prayers. Um... You start wanting to live for yourself instead of him. Um, 
but I'm changing back into how I was. I, with the help of God himself, I'm able to change back into how I was when I got saved. Um, little by little, I'm working on it. I'm fighting sin, willful sin. Like, like a few days ago, I got drunk again. So, I mean, I fell, but when you, I mean, you're not going to, to not fall is perfection. So obviously people who are not going to fall, you know, have one foolish thought um, or whatever is impossible. You can't go a single, you can't even go a, a few minutes without sinning. Um, it's completely impossible. So we sin hundreds of times a day, at least probably. Um, so, yeah, if, so obviously I fall, even though I'm a true born again Christian, true born again Christians fall, even with God residing within them, they still fall because of our fleshly sinful nature. Um, he gives the ability, us the ability to choose whether or not we want to resist him or serve him. Resisting means to go into our own fleshly desires and sin, like getting drunk or some people it's watching porn, other people it's masturbation, other people it's like overdosing, which I did a long a while ago. Um, other people it's smoking, other people it's using drugs, like coke and, cocaine and stuff. Other people it's fornication, blah, blah. Um... Whatever your fleshly desire is, is what Satan uses as your weakness. He tempts you to do that the most. Like, for me, it's alcohol. And it used, for me, also used to be clonazepam overdoses. Clonazepam is an anxiety medicine, and just taking one of it will replace your anxiety with a relaxed feeling. And I used to take like 15 of them at once, and it lasted for days. And I went, like, uh, I mean, it was, like, it messed me up completely. Like, it erased some of my memory. I mean, like, I, wo I went to sleep, and then I woke up the next day not even knowing what happened. Like, not even knowing, how, like, that I even went to sleep. But, like, un um, unawareness sleep, you know. You fall asleep unconsciously. Like, you go unconscious. So, um, so that's bad. I mean, I drank too much before years ago to where I blacked out. I mean, I drank three whole bottles of wine in one night and I woke up on my floor at my, uh, this was at my apartment in 2014. I woke up on my floor. Actually, it's after I got saved too. It's, it's the last day of the state fair, which is in October. Um, October something, 2014, the night before that, I, uh, in October, the night before the last day of the state fair, I drank three 750 ml bottles of Pinot Grigio wine because being drunk feels absolutely amazing. It's completely blissful. It takes away all of your, like, worries and fears and cares of the world, and it just replaces it with, like... I mean, a really, really relaxed feeling. You feel like you have, um, and like the power to do anything. Like, like I mean, it's like it's a really good feeling, but it's stupid. You know, it's only killing you. Your brain is feeling good to trick you into drinking it. That's how I was. I started out getting drunk because it felt awesome. It felt cool. It felt, I loved how it felt, then I kept doing it more and more because it felt awesome, not even knowing that my brain was tricking me into it, feeling good, so I would even, so I'll feed it more because my body was working up some kind of addiction or some kind of alcohol problem, and then I found myself drinking eight bottles of 750 ml bottles of wine in less than two weeks. So, um... So, yeah, I mean, there's that right there. And one one time I drank three three whole 750 bottles of Pinot Grigio wine, three whole bottles a night for three whole nights in a row. I weighed, I was chubby back then, so I weighed a good 212 pounds. So that means my body was able to hold a lot more alcohol than it is now, which I'm 190-something, 200, because I... Because of my 
biceps because I have like big muscles, but I was 80, 185 earlier on this year. Um, but so you can, I, one time I drank five bottles of wine in one night and I didn't die. So, I mean, yeah, I could have definitely. Yeah, but I didn't. Grace of God was keeping me alive. One time I drank a 750 ml bottle of vodka in like 20 margaritas. Took me like five hours to drink the whole thing, but I was drinking them one after another so it wasn't spacing out the alcohol and I got extremely messed up. It didn't even feel like I was drunk. I actually could my eyes were all blurry. I, I wasn't drunk. I just felt normal, but when I stood up, when I standed up, I just fell right over. I fell over on my computer, on my iPad. So I couldn't keep bounced standing up. So I just, the I, only thing I could do is lay down. So I put on, I had, um, uh, I had these, um, these weird VR goggles back then. So not PS4 VR because it wasn't out in 2016, uh, like January 2016. But, um, so. These were like TZ, it, it was called TZ or something like that. But, um, so I put them on and my eyes were like more blur than looking underwater. So I, I couldn't see crap while typing in like, uh, letters to, uh, to type into a TV show or something on Netflix. So I couldn't see anything. So I could barely hear because when you're drunk, your ears are all clouded out so you can't really hear the normal volume you have to turn it up way um because you're it's like your ears are popped or something but so i couldn't do anything so i just went to sleep you know i went to sleep um could have died in my sleep but grace of god is keeping me alive uh i'm getting better nowadays fighting sin which i mean more and more I'm trying my hardest to fight and, uh, yeah, I mean, this video got a little out of hand, but the main thing is I mentioned quenching the Holy Spirit and what it means. So, I will, um, conclude this video with... No, your video did not freeze. Sorry, I've been playing a lot of video games lately and they've been lagging, so I guess I'm lagging in real life now. Nah, stop. <laughs> I like messing around in, in videos. Anyways, I will let you guys go, and I will talk to you later. See ya.